The same psychological and emotional and spiritual forces that prevail within the journey of an individual prevail within the journey of a nation because all that a nation is is a collection of individuals. So if you're clued in as to what changes one life, you're clued in as to what changes the world. And what we know is that in order to transform a life, you can't just change things on the outside. You have to change things on the inside, too. And among other things, you have to be very clear, brutally honest with yourself about your character defects. You have to be willing to atone, and you have to be willing to make amends, and you have to be willing to change. It's time for the United States to do the same in some areas where we have character defects as a nation, in areas where we have not lived, either in the past or in the present, as who we say that we are. We have not lived and we are not living on the principles on which we purport to stand. One of these areas is the issue of race. Now we had slavery in the United States, obviously. We abolished slavery. But at the end of the Civil War in 1865, even though 40 acres and a mule was promised by General Sherman to every formerly enslaved person in most cases, that acreage and that mule were not given, and even in the cases where they were, in most cases, they were then taken away. What that means is that full economic integration into the new condition of freedom was never achieved. In fact, quite the opposite. Throughout the American South, black code laws were passed, which were to ensure the subjugation of the formerly enslaved population. John Birch Society, Ku Klux Klan, lynchings, the institutionalization of white supremacy and segregation. And those horrors, that next phase of violence against black people in America, was not fundamentally addressed until the 1960s and the civil rights movement. And once again, was, was progress achieved? Yes, progress was achieved. But we have not finished the job of full reconciliation. Not only that, in many ways, we have slid backwards. We have actually chipped away at the Voting Rights Act. Mass incarceration is a horrifying example of an institutionalized racial discrimination in criminal sentencing. We have a problem in our times, and we need to address this problem, not just in incremental ways, but in fundamental ways. I propose a plan for reparations for slavery. Just as the German nation has paid $89 billion in reparations to Jewish organizations since World War II. And just as the United States has paid $20,000 in reparations to descendants of those who were in Japanese internment camps during World War II, I propose a $100 billion plan of reparations to be paid over 10 years. I submit that we should choose a council of esteemed African-American leaders who were given over a 10-year period $10 billion a year and this money should be dispersed as they deem most appropriate in order for economic and educational revitalization to be achieved within the black community. It's time. It's time for a fundamental effort. It's time for us to do for future generations what other generations have done for us, to rise to the occasion in our time and make the kind of significant progress that will ensure that to the best of our ability, Ancient wrongs will be addressed, and new possibilities, new fairness, new liberty, new justice, which in this case, in many cases, was never fully achieved, shall be achieved in our time.